If a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody around to resuscitate it, will it stop breathing? Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and you're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you'll find this video to be entertaining, educational, all that good stuff. And at the end of the video, I hope that I'll have earned your subscription. In today's video, I wanted to touch on a subject that came up uh, in the comment section of one of my recent videos where I talked about different processes that may not be necessary when you build a guitar. And specifically what that comment mentioned was pore filling. And I, I, I'm gonna kind of expand on that a little bit to go beyond pore filling. But what the commenter mentioned was that a lot of guys will claim that the wood in their guitars needs to breathe in order to be resonant. However, if you're using a lot of pore fillers and you know thick plastic clear coats like uh, nitrocellulose or polyurethane or polyester, that would inhibit the breathability of the wood. So I got to thinking about that. And in truth, I think the term breathe may not be the right word to use for, uh, with respect to what we're talking about. I think what we're talking about, and, and I'm only guessing here, is the wood's resonance. And supposedly, if you're putting a lot of finishing products on the wood to get a smooth, glossy finish, that would somehow inhibit the resonance of the wood. Now, I think that's absolutely true in acoustic guitars because the sound from an acoustic guitar comes from the wood's ability to vibrate because it's a, the body is a box. It's like a drum. And when you strum the strings over it, it becomes like an air pump that pumps the sound out of the hole. So if you encapsulate an acoustic guitar body in a thick finish, that could inhibit its ability to vibrate. But is that necessary in a solid body electric guitar? I think what people are considering is that when you pluck the strings, the strings will vibrate and that vibration transfers to the wood of the, of the guitar, whether it's the body, the neck, the fretboard. And somehow that uh, vibration in the wood will affect the pickups, causing them to vibrate. So if the pickups are vibrating, the strings are vibrating, that's all gonna contribute to the frequencies that the pickup detects from the strings and incorporates into the outgoing signal to your amplifier and speaker. That's, I think that's probably true, but is it something we can actually detect with our ears? I know that when I watch a lot of YouTube videos where guys are comparing different body woods and the placement of pickups, the height of the pickups and stuff like that, in some cases you can detect the differences that they're trying to demonstrate, but in many others you can't. There's, there's just no way that you can detect a difference. However, when you read through the comments, you'll get a lot of folks who will say, yeah, I absolutely can detect a difference here and blah, blah, blah. But I think really more than anything, they're just trying to show the world how sophisticated and, and smart and perceptive they are, which doesn't make any sense because in most cases, they're posting their comments under an alias. So we don't even know who they are. But I think that in a solid body electric guitar, the wood's ability to vibrate, I think you should take that into consideration, but can you control it? Probably not. If you went out and bought a piece of mahogany and were intent on making the body out of that piece of mahogany, you have no way of knowing how it's going to affect the resonance of the guitars, of its ultimate tone and sound that you hear coming out of the speaker. So 
it really becomes a moot point. Um, it, it, it becomes the subject for social media arguing, where we can bicker back and forth about the theoretical uh, possibilities here. But when people will s tell me that, you know, you shouldn't pour fill or you shouldn't use this type of finish or that type of finish because it can affect the wood's ability to breathe, I usually will go back at them and say, wood doesn't breathe. Even when it was alive, it didn't breathe it, or it can't breathe because wood doesn't have a respiratory system. It can't inhale oxygen, convert it to carbon dioxide, and then expel it. Uh, other species of life like humans and, and most animals have that ability, but wood doesn't. A tree doesn't do that. The only thing that wood can do, and this is really important, is it can absorb and expel moisture. And that's one of the reasons why we put finish on our guitars. It's to seal the wood so that we can limit as much as possible its ability to absorb and expel moisture. Because if that happens over and over and over, especially over the course of like a decade or more, that constant expansion and contraction which happens when it absorbs moisture. When it absorbs the moisture, it can swell and expand. When it expels it uh, in periods of, of dry uh, air, it will expel it and that will cause the wood to shrink. So when that happens over and over and over repeatedly, the wood fibers can begin to separate and you'll get a split or a crack in the wood. In the case of a neck, what can happen over time is the wood can start to move in unpredictable ways. It can bow, it can warp, but worse of all, it can twist. So to try to minimize that, we use these finishing products to seal the wood to prevent it from absorbing and expelling moisture. That's why I think it's confusing to say wood needs to breathe because it's not breathing. It, it really is responsive to resonance, the resonance of the vibrating string. Another thought that I had with regard to how pore fillers and clear coats might affect the breathability or the resonance of the wood is that in truth, when you pluck the string, the string's vibration are transferred to the wood at the bridge. It's, it's not like the vibrations emanate out from the strings and are absorbed into the wood. I think the vast majority of the vibrations are transferred by the bridge, which is mounted to the wood. Uh, you can take a clear coat finished guitar, you know, say a guitar that has like a polyester finish. Um, like this Squire guitar. And you can place the edge of the wood, the edge of the body, right up against a wall. Now this has to be a wall that was made with studs and covered in drywall. It can't be a brick wall or cinder block or anything like that. But if you place it up against a wall that's got drywall on it, unplugged and strum it, the entire room is going to resonate because the strings vibration are passing through the body and into the wall itself. It doesn't matter if it's got a polyester clear coat or a natural hand rubbed oil finish, it's gonna be, the, it's gonna resonate. So I think that's mainly because the vibrations are transferred from the strings to the body through the bridge. It's not absorbed, you know, and for one thing, this guitar has a pick guard on it. So that theoretically would block the resonance of the strings from being absorbed into the wood. Uh, now with a, an acoustic guitar, of course, 
the strings are mainly vibrating the bridge, which is causing the top to vibrate, and that transfers all through the wood in the box. But if you smother that wood in a thick clear coat, it's not going to vibrate as freely as if it was clear coated in something really thin, like a, a couple of coats of nitrocellulose or a French polished shellac finish. But if you clear coat it with a thick polyester, that could theoretically muffle or absorb the, the vibration and muffle the, the tone and the resonance of the acoustic guitar. But with a solid body electric guitar, I just don't think that that's as big of an issue. So I hope that what I've just described makes sense. Uh, I know that sometimes when I make these videos, viewers will sometimes have uh, an agenda before they even watch the, the, the movie. They'll, they'll read the title and form an opinion in their own mind. And then other times folks will watch the videos, but they may miss the point. And that's either because they didn't pay attention or I didn't do a good job of stressing what the point was. But my goal with most of my videos is to try to help the new builder weed through some of the nonsense. And frankly, I think the whole topic of wood's breathability is not necessarily nonsense, it's just inaccurate or incorrect. So hopefully some of you watching will, will have some ideas and thoughts about this and we'll post them down in the comments section below because that's really where everybody has a chance to learn. And, um, you know, we'll see what, what comes of that. And hopefully uh, I won't raise the ire of those who will disagree or have their own agenda. <laughs> anyway... Until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, click that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next episode.